The next law or principle of logic that we'll discuss in this series is the law of excluded middle, sometimes shortened to the LEM. Just like the law of non-contradiction, this too deals with propositions. In this case, it deals with the truth or non-truth of the proposition. Just as a reminder, a proposition is a declarative statement about some state of affairs, such as Socrates is a man, this video is on YouTube, or God exists. Let's take the proposition God exists here as a simple and relevant example. In this proposition we have a subject, in this case God. While the subject is an individual thing in this case, the subject could also refer to multiple things, such as cows or stars or atheists. Basically the subject part of the proposition simply declares the set of things that is being spoken about. Whether that set contains one or many things is irrelevant. This proposition also contains a predicate, in this case exists. The predicate describe some quality or property that relates to the subject. So in this proposition, the subject God has the quality or property existence. This makes the proposition truth act, meaning that the statement could be true or false. If there is a subject God, and this subject God contains the quality or property of existence, then this statement is a true statement. If not, then this statement is not a true statement. Of course, the truth of the statement depends on what's meant by God and what is meant by existence, but we can get into that in a future video when we discuss propositions in more detail. To understand the LEM, it is enough to understand what it means when we say a proposition is truth apt, and what it means for a proposition to be truth apt. It is this that the LEM deals with. The LEM is a principle that states that for every proposition, either the proposition or its negation is true, and there is no other option. Continuing with the example God exists, the LEM is a principle that states either God exists is true, or God does not exist is true. This is because God does not exist is the negation of the proposition God exists. Declaring God does not exist is the equivalent of declaring the proposition God exists is false. If the proposition God exists is true, then the proposition God does not exist is false. And if the proposition God exists is false, then the proposition God does not exist is true. These are contradictory propositions, and both cannot be true at the same time. If both of them were true, it would violate the law of non-contradiction mentioned in the previous video. The statements God exists and God does not exist cannot both be true in the same sense and same way at the same time. These two statements refer to the same subject in the same way, and both refer to the quality that this subject has, in this case, existence. So God cannot both have existence and non-existence in the same sense and same way at the same time. Neither can both propositions be false at the same time, if they are contradictory propositions. One being false means the other must be true. To argue that they were both false would also be a contradiction, and thus violate the principle of the law of non-contradiction. This means means that neither of these two cases are possible when it comes to the truth of a proposition. It can only be the case that either a proposition is true and its contradictory or negation is false, or the proposition is false and its contradictory or negation is true. This is what the law of excluded middle refers to, that a proposition is either true and its contradictory false, or a proposition is false and its contradictory true. And there is no other option. This is the case for any proposition. If you want to see it in action, try applying the same principle to the other two example propositions mentioned at the beginning of the video. So there we have it. This is the law of excluded middle. What principle the LEM is about and why the LEM is the case. There are other forms of logic where the LEM may not apply, but this is the LEM as it applies to classical logic. See you next time for the law of identity.